with its seemingly long list of benefits, which includes boosting mood, alleviating pain, promoting healthy sleep and healthy digestion, improving skin conditions, and so many more. It's no wonder people are turning to essential oils to support their health and well-being. The popularity of these wonder-working oils is stirring interest in learning how to extract them for personal use or for business. Welcome to Extraction Essentials, where you'll learn and discover how to create a formula using quality engineered products. Hosted by Tony Frischnecht, this podcast is all about the process of extraction tools and the equipment that surrounds the extraction lab or facility. Create an income while enjoying the many benefits and uses of essential oils by tuning in to Extraction Essentials. Welcome back to another episode of Extraction Essentials. I'm your host, Tony Frischknecht. I'm so happy to have you guys here today. Guys, if this is the first time you're lis- listening to the show, please hit the subscribe button for the podcast or YouTube channel. Uh, you know, it just alerts you guys when we have new stuff coming up. It also allows you guys, us, us as creators, to give you more content. The more we're able to get out to people, the more you guys are going to be able to see. So please do that for us. Now let's get to the show. Today I'm excited because we're changing gears a little bit from our normal educational platform that we have. We're going to do an interview type format today. And I'm very excited to talk to our next guest. He's extremely knowledgeable about extraction. And today I have John McKay with you, actually Dr. John McKay. He is an internationally recognized scientist, scientific expert in analytical testing, extraction, and purification techniques within the botanical space. His career has included many roles in innovative product development. Dr. McKay is currently a contributor journalist of Extraction Magazine and Terpings and Testing Magazine, a publication serving industry and science on horticulture, extraction, and testing labs. Dr. McKay earned his BA in chemistry from St. Lawrence University and his PhD from the University of Vermont in inorganic chemistry focused on the synthesis of cancer-fighting compounds. Please welcome John McKay to the show. Dr. John McKay, how are you doing today? Very well. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's, a, it's always a pleasure to speak with you guys. It's never, a, it's never a dull moment, so we have no idea which way we're going to trail in the bunny hole, but we'll see where it goes. Exactly. Well, you know, for some of the listeners out there, I know you've got an extensive, extensive background and, you know, we, we don't focus solely on this show about cannabis. Of course we focus on essential extraction. And for those that have been listening from the beginning, this is kind of where we as a company got our start in the can, but there's so many other things, right? There's so many, there's so many other essential oils out there in our world right now. And so I'm happy to have you on but I, can you explain to the listeners a little more in depth on, you know, why you enjoy the science of extracting? Well, a lot of the extraction happens no matter what you're doing for sample prep and the analytical chemistry. So um, extraction happens whether you're doing a blood plasma for peptides or you're doing a pesticide work at the USDA or you're doing uh, mining for gold or you're or you're looking for ionic uh, compounds of uh, sodium or fluoride or whatever's in our water system, each one of those is an extraction. You have to be able to do an extraction to be able to isolate the compounds you're looking for and then analyze them. And so when you move it to a larger scale where you're using that product in other means or other, or other products, uh, essential oils, which they call them EO, and so when you're doing that, each one of those parts of the business starts from the analytical side. So I, I've been doing it since 1972, once you really figure out what extraction is on a small scale. Um, so if you've been drinking decaffeinated coffee, you're, you're looking at extraction. If you've had uh, nicotine cigarettes, that's an extraction. Each one of those is an extraction, as well as walking up and down the, the aisle with vanilla or or DH, uh, D, DHEA, or any of the you know fish oils. Those are all those are all extraction based uh, technology that's providing those products on our shelves. 
Well, why? So let me ask you this: Why have you chosen to focus solely on where you spend most of your time? Well, I didn't spend most of my time with that before the late 2012. Um, before that time, I had no knowledge of uh, of cannabis. Um, maybe someone along the way might have showed it to me in, in, uh, in college days or so, but. As a, as a research scientist and making analytical equipment, I had no interest in it. And I remember when it first came out and I started to see that they were doing uh, medical marijuana you know, applications. To be quite frank, I said, this is the stupidest thing I've ever <laughs> heard in my life. All these people want to do is get high. But I was, but I was an eastern side of the United States uh, most of my life, not the western side of the United States. And, or even the Midwestern side of the United States. But as you, as you looked at that, and I read more into it, reading some of Ethan Russo's work, um, um, Sanjay Gupta went out to uh, Colorado and found that he also had had the wrong opinion about how this could be working to the endocannabinoid system. I started reading Shula's work, who's a, another synthetic organic chemist. And as I went through that process, I realized that you know, I also had a family member who died of, of, um, of epilepsy through a grand mall. And she had been on her life on phenobarbital and um, it was a life interrupt and really interrupted, you know, because back then if you had epilepsy and you were, you know, having blinking eyes and it was hard to concentrate, you were always having seizures. It's, it's really hard to, to not be you know, made fun of, of you're slow or you're this or you're that. And, and, and so that made it, I, that made it more personal. And so that's when I started digging into it and I sort of backed into the industry rather than, you know, aggressively going into it. So I, I backed into it just on the fact that as I looked at the extraction technology that was out there in 2012, it was, it wasn't as um, research oriented. And so I was able to bring that, that scientific bearing and merged it in with the practical application uh, applied, applied scientists that were out there um, for generations um, that might have been, uh, you know, in a cottage industry, for example. Yeah. And so and that's how I did it. Extraction's been around for, you know, hundreds of years, basically. You know, you know as when you look into the cannabis world, we, we kind of just think it's this new thing, right? This new thing, all of a sudden extraction just popped up out of the sky and now we're extracting oil for cannabis. However, that is not the case. It's for the furthest from the case. Why do people act like this is just something that it's a new technology? What do, do people not realize? Do they not study it? What, what do we find in, in the industry? What are you finding why the, that's the case? In the United States, um, I'll, I'll just to the United States, especially on the eastern side of the United States, we're not familiar with this as a plant that grows in such you know, um, varieties and, and at such scale. And so you're also walking through you know, our, our land of a, it was a bad drug and it has no value. And so you also had that through our, through our heritage and um, in the cannabis plant, to be quite frank, back in the 1970s, might have had four or six percent of uh, cannabinoids, and now we've got plants that are you know up to 32. So I think there's two things that that happen. Number one is we weren't aware of of the plant and its potential medicinal value, and the second one is you know, not to be quite blunt, but Americans uh, tend to think that they've discovered the world and. and We've only been here a few hundred years, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the, the Chinese have been in China for a lot longer than we've been in the United States, as well as the Egyptians, as well as um, the you know um, everyone over in Afghanistan, that sort of side of the world, in India. This mm-hmm. is not a new technology for them to be able to do that. I would also add on to that that the science of medicine was called pharmacocracy. Pharmacognosy was the medicinal value that came out of plants. And then around the 1950s, probably uh, somewhere in there, slowly but surely those pharmacognosy PhDs, like Dr. Osoli is a pharmacognosist, um, bio-ethnobotany. And so when you look at that, 
it, that was slowly transformed into um, pharmacies with small molecules because they're much more controlled. But many of those small molecules, Americans don't know that came from, from the natural product. And you know, there's no one out there gnawing on bark just to get aspirin. And so when, when, we, when we see that, that's, that's the part that moving it back towards the natural products, um, they call it traditional Chinese medicine. Well, it should be traditional China, it should be traditional medicine. And mm -hmm. that's more of what it is, but we've, we've aligned it as so it's an Eastern sort of thing versus a Western sort of a, you know, we're a you know, level one society, for example, where they would mm -hmm. say that, but, but, but when you're in China, the, you're going to find you know, shops that are making that are making uh, personalized medicine and have for not just hundreds of years, but tens of thousands of years. Are these little shops, are they, they're creating extraction or they're taking plant material such as what we're talking about and they're actually creating their own products and putting it on the shelves? Is that what you've seen? It's actually personalized medicine. So it's much like you see some of the, um, compounders you still see them in some of the cities as you go around you'll see pharmacies but if, if you look in the yellow pages which i believe the yellow pages is now in my hand um <laughs> you, you go back through and you, you'll find compounders still making unique products whether it's for the endocrine disruptors or whether it's for um, menopause or it's uh, or other things like that you're going to find specialized ones for your your metabolism in in China, in some areas of China, the doctors um, only get paid when you're healthy. They don't get paid if you get sick. So they're responsible for keeping you healthy, not for taking care of your disease states. That's a completely different mind shift. It's, yeah. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, the Americans aren't going to build that in real soon. No. No, that's uh, yeah. I can I could agree with you on that. They went to medical school not to keep an office. That's yeah, a lot that's. Of money. It, it, but it is a got, what a great thing to aspire towards, though. To it, eventually, you know, if we could we could shift the mindset of of creating a healthier community by paying people to be healthy. It definitely is a mind shift. There's a there's a great uh, skit by um, not skit, but. Uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, um, with Bob Newhart. And he merges the spin around of, of, of Western medicine versus Eastern. And, and what do the Eastern medicine people learn from us? And it's, it's quite entertaining if, <laughs> if you Google up Bob Newhart and, uh, and the traditional medicine. It's, it's, quite, it's, it's a good five minutes of, of good fun. Our understanding that, you know, there are people that are start, like such as yourself starting to understand this more and more. Where do you think we see the future of extraction heading over the next five, 10 years? Well, the first part was the encouraging part of, of um, being able to have the states legalize it. The second part that uh, Dr. Jeff Raber and I were on, definitely on a, on a war path as far as making sure that people knew um, that Pesticides probably weren't a good thing. And everyone said, oh, no, no, you, got, you don't have pesticides. And so when you look at how far it's come from 2012, 2014, so there was this first stage of just the um, ITHC um, products. And then you had a second surge of products in 2018 when the farm bill came into pass. So you're seeing that 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 transition, the transition goes from um, making four or five cookies in your house doesn't mean that you're suddenly going to be making, for example, Keebler cookies, you know, and hundreds of thousands of these things. So what you're going to see is more automation, more real time, knowing what's happening inside that vessel, more regulations as far as not only uh, ASME or uh, FDA or, or USDA, but you're going to see OSHA. You're going to have other things that have to come into play that make sure that your employees are safe, but also that the product isn't out in the open. You're not going to have people around desks snipping and making butts. You're not going to have people, you know, loading, you know, um, uh, 
vessels with with a with a scoop and a and a and a funnel. You're gonna you're gonna have real uh, production style where you, from the time the plant comes in until it, it's in the ingredient forms that you want. It's never touched. It's uh, it goes through an entire process and it's monitored the entire way. Yeah, I think it's hard. Uh, you know for for those people out there that are listening now, I, I imagine it's challenging for them to wrap their heads around that, especially if they're in a, um, you know, totally prohibition state, what that yeah. doesn't allow medical or recreational at this point. Uh, then that's so that, going to be less and less, but it's still, uh, for example, some of the things that come from that are uh, the people you know, finding the loopholes like Delta 8, it's a, it's a loophole. Mm-hmm. So that's, there's a lot of things that can happen post that, uh, that still have to be taken care of. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's so much to learn about this, but also where do you get the right education? Right. I mean, what type of platforms out there offer education on, but the extraction side, are you aware of any? Uh, it's like a, one of those big softballs that come in slow <laughs> and there's no one in the outfield and, they're trying to get a hit at the bottom of the ninth. So there are some really good platforms out there. I would say that um, I would say that uh, Green Flower, for example, Max has put a, put together a good program on, um, on the computer side and being able to look at videos and some you know good people that put them together. I, I've helped put a couple of them together for them with multiple PhDs or multiple people that have a lot of personal experience with solvent and solvent less i would say um you know uh for example um i would say mace uh, media where um, they put together a lot of different platforms for that and try to uh you know really work towards not only the extraction side but the medical side i think that some of the magazines are, are um, in journals are doing a good job there's some cannabis science science cannabis journals out there that are focused on really looking at the science and readable format i um on my own side I'm, i am starting up my own um website uh for extraction research and uh and for doing classes so i'm, I'm gonna be yeah you're creating you're creating a platform yourself yeah. too right yeah yes. so you're you're setting this up you're going to create some curriculum i mean how how are you how are you formatting the curriculum have you decided on how you're going to do that yet or how far down the road are you well, I got my first class in Dece- uh, July 7th in Denver, so I better get it done pretty soon. <laughs> I'm going to go back through. My teaching style is um, in between a science, uh, science guy and Bill Nye, the science guy, a, a little bit of Robin Williams, a, a lot of bit of Bob Newhart, and, and, and then just pure Dr. Mishula, um, uh science. And so on my side, I really I try and bring the extraction – to everyday terms. And so for me, um, in my classes, you're, you're going to be making coffee and you're going to be looking at caffeinated versus decaffeinated. You're going to be looking at lavender. You're going to be looking at orange peels. You're going to be looking at it by CO2, by ethanol, um, by just grinding. There's, there's a lot of different ways where you have not only the teaching, but for me, you have to learning comes through listening, seeing, touching, doing, and having a, a vibrant discussion during a session. So that's how I'm, I'm really structuring for a one day, a two day and a three day that as you get deeper and deeper into it, how much you want to get into it, but also you know, don't forget that you have the, the business side. And so you had to merge the business with the science. Um, the other part that I see is that there's a difference between someone working for a large multi-state license and someone who's making a product for their mom or for their child that's you know trying to to make something that's that's ethical and safe because they're they have them under their care so it goes from the 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 person making their own coffee you know drying and roasting their own coffee and then making their own you know boutique coffee or teas or something like that all the way through you know outside of starbucks for gosh sakes i mean it's not as though they're they're in there growing them in the back and then bringing them out front. So you have all those different processes. So my, my teaching philosophy is, is fun, hands-on, science doesn't have to be bad. 
and you know making molecules so that you really see what this product is and 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 looking at the ramifications as well as the positive side but it's so, also everything it's eo yeah so you know going back to you talked about the creating your own compounds for personal uh, for personal uh, use for people in, in China, and they've been doing it for years. Do you see this as part of that education to, to create something like that? Or, I mean, you brought up lavender and everything else, but is this something like, who is this best suited for? Someone breathing. Okay. So everyone is basically. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you can fog a mirror. <laughs> I think one of the things that, that I, that I believe is that no matter how you come into it as an expert or as a novice, merging those together and merging those people together allows, it's a challenge for me because now I'm making sure that I'm, I'm not leaving anyone behind and I'm not boring someone to death. And so you can segment that knowledge by starting with a surface and going a little deeper and then going a little deeper. And then most of the people I've seen um, will also see that there's there's a fun part to it so that the people that are totally way beyond my intelligence by any stretch of the imagination yet being able to say oh wow i i could bring that to my grandmother and now i can explain to my grandmother what i'm doing by you know three packs of of, uh, of colored candy colored chocolate candy mm -hmm. and that's how i you know so now you can say how do you how do you bring the experts so that they can talk to people not everyone who's an expert can can articulate it in a fun way but at the same time now you have someone who's learning from m and is going, oh, so that's the other compounds that are in there. So now you bring their level up and the other one down. But when you merge those people together and you bring them, you know, coffee, tea, and, a, and uh, some sort of pastry, they're going to talk to each other and they're going to start to merge with each other and, and recognize that they, they feed off of each other and they can contribute to each other. So if you have a level of interest in how botanical extraction works that it doesn't matter what level you're at. Is that what you're telling me? I have positioned it so that it's got different levels. And I, so it, it, it really goes to each level and allows the analogies for the experts and it allows the, the, um, the novice to see how it, how it contributes in each part whether it's uh, the, the water content, what, why, what is that important? Um, the size of the particles, why is that important? And then, so yes, it, it, it allows people to, to see every part of it. And that's, that's my goal is to, uh, is to merge classes because I taught chemistry to, you know, 300 students at one point in time. <laughs> yeah. and, and when you have a, when you have a, you know, you look up there and you see 300 students and you're just going, these people are not all on the same level. And so now you have to make it, you know, so you don't bore the, the students that really are more excelled in, and you bring the other students up to a, to an acceptable level. If they get to see when they came in going, first of all, there's no such atoms. I can't see them. So therefore they don't exist. And so that, that's really how I do it. Great. So, so, it's, so you're doing a, you're doing a one, two and three day course. Yep. Um, what, what are some of the costs on these courses just to. Yeah. So I, I'm, I, because I'm me and because I can be me, um, I, I made the, uh, the one day course $710. Okay. So for most people that know extraction, they smile because if you, if you put that upside down, it spells oil. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm glad you pointed that out because I wouldn't have figured that out right away. That's for sure. <laughs> so that's why seven hundred and ten dollars. <laughs> well, and, and the, those those of you that are out there, I mean, the the extent of knowledge, it, it just, I mean, what kind of time can they save with just one day course? What, what what will that bring to them? My goal is that when they go back to an industry, that the ROI should be less than two days that they should recoup that $710 within two days. That's my goal. Because if they can learn one or two things that they come away with that change their process or allows them more productivity or less waste, then I've, I've, then I've done 
what I needed to do to make them responsible and productivity because because no one's going to no one's going to spend seven hundred and ten dollars during this economy um, on a waste. They also have an opportunity that they can take a test or not. And so they can be certified or just say they attended either way. But because I came out of college teaching, um, there's no worse students in the world. I don't care what you do than a pre-med student. Oh, they're impossible a pre-med. to teach. <laughs> Because they're what? so brilliant. Why is that? Oh, they're, they're too s- smart. <laughs> they're too smart. But also they will battle for, for one more point. You know, I should have gotten, you know, a 90, 90, 91. I got a 90. Just like, and they'll come in and battle. And uh, and typically this is what I did. So this is a, a small, I said, I'm welcome to look at your tests. If you'd like me to review your tests, I will again. But there's probably points that I probably gave you too many points on another section. But be sure and leave it here. Cause you could probably get a 91 or you might get a 73. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That'll make you think of making you go work again, going through that yeah. time. If they could potentially lose points, <laughs> if they can lose points. That's what it is. But I, but I do, I do test on the material itself and I, and I do go back through. So then I went back through and, and I look at that and I say, um, you know, knowing that knowing the basics and then knowing how to apply it. So to get a hundred, you, you got to know how to apply it, not only in the science, but on, on the business side. So it's emerging of business and science. And on my side, I, I really drive towards formulation centric. You, you start at the end on the ingredients you're trying to make, you move it back towards where do I get those ingredients? And then you move it back towards how do I extract, to be able to get those ingredients. And from there you extract to, What's the variety of the plant that's going to provide me those ingredients? And so you don't start with the beginning. You start at the end. And that's, yeah. that's typically. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, uh, just like so many goals in your life, right? Start with the end in mind. How am I going to, let's see where I want to get. And that's work backwards and figure out all the, all the things that I need to make that happen. Um, so John, how, when is this course in Denver? When are you, when are you? It's the uh, 7th and 8th in Denver. Of July. And- yeah, July, and then, then where's um, it at? Where's it at? Do you I have a put place it out for by you? The, the, the Gaylord. Okay, so you're at the Gaylord. Great. Um, and what is I'm the name Marriott of the, guy? Okay, what's the name of the uh, uh, what's the name of the the courses that you're doing? Do you have a name for it? Yeah, it's just cleverly enough extraction. Just the extraction courses, principles and practices of uh, okay of extraction. Okay, great, and. I know we're going to put something in the link here for people to find it, but how can people, what's your website? So people can reach out to you there if they're interested. So it's synergistic tech associates.com synergistic tech associates.com. Okay. I try to make it as long as possible, but make sure that that's okay. It'll, really it'll have to work to get there. It'll be in the, it'll be in the blog post. So people, if they're interested, they can go to extractionessentials.com, click on there really easy. Um, John, really cool stuff that you have coming out. I, I, I'd really be interested in, uh, in having you on again in the future to discuss how things are going and, and stuff you're seeing with some of your, uh, some of your students, because I know you've been, you've been teaching for a long time and, you know, most teachers say, I assume you're probably the one as well. You know, you learn as much from your students as they learn from you. And I'm sure that that's that's the case. Very much. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, If you guys are listening to our podcast at all, you're obviously less interested in extraction. So uh, John is an amazing amazing teacher. So please look him up. Um, he has an extensive knowledge. He also, like you said before, he really, if you guys are against cannabis, totally fine. Don't let that draw you away from him. That's just what brought him over to, uh, you know, exploring some new compounds and understanding that. So I'm sure he's learned an extensive amount, but also if you are interested in cannabis, of course, this is the guy to talk to about extraction. So, John, thanks so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Guys, thanks. again, if you great. are, thanks. that's yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, if you guys are, if you guys are enjoying listening to what, what we're bringing here today, 
please hit the subscribe button or like us. We appreciate that. And check out all the rest of our episodes. We've got another 20 something episodes right now that are explaining all kinds of different ways we extract. So come check it out at extractionessentials.com and have a wonderful day. And we'll see you guys next week. You have just listened to another informative episode of Extraction Essentials with Tony Frischknit. We invite you to come back next time as we strive to provide useful knowledge and tools every week to help you on your extraction business. You can also visit extractionessentials.com for additional resources and to know more about working with Tony. See you again next time.